Hey everybody, today let's talk about tyres, and particularly motorcycle tyres, as this is a motorcycle channel. Um, I make lots of videos to help new riders get onto a bike. I have a playlist called Tips for New Riders, and in this playlist there are videos that take you from buying a bike, understanding what licence you need, what you can and can't ride at your current age, how to ride the bike, how to pass the test, what to expect, tons of stuff. Mechanical, maintenance, everything you can think of. This playlist is proving to be very valuable to a lot of people. But I realised in all this time, although I've talked about tubed v tubeless tyres, uh, I've never really talked about breaking down the sizing code that you see on tyres. And it's not entirely straightforward, but it's actually very simple. And it's something that confused me a bit to begin with at the very beginning when I got a bike. So, you know, what I often lead is to people using the same tyre that comes with a bike time and time again, never trying anything new because they don't know what they can have. This is the true name of that tyre. All of the information is in its name. So, we know that the manufacturer is Michelin, the model is a Pilot Road 2, we'll get on to why that's a thing. Then we've got the 160, and this is the measurement bit that you'll be giving people, 160, 60, 17. Um, sometimes it will then say ZR, or it will say ZR17, and then you've got TL, 69W, rear wheel, MC. This is actually quite a simple thing, however they use three different units of measurement. This is millimetres, this is percent, and this is inches. Yeah, I know. So let's start with the 160. The 160 is the width of the tyre, so across the tyre in millimetres. So see the 160 as 160 millimetres wide. Your 60, I used to think this was the height of the sidewall in millimetres. It is not. It is an aspect ratio. It is a percentage. So this 60 is 60%, which means the height of this tyre is 60% the width. So it is a measurement, but it's shown as a percentage. And, and this will change the radius of the tyre. Uh, so say you had something that had a very high percentage, you'd end up with a tyre that's very tall like that and have sides that fall off. If you have a lower one, it will be more of a, a curve like that. So that's 60, is 60% 60 of the width is the height of the tire, the aspect ratio. So that's what that is. Uh, then we have ZR, TL, let's, let's do the 17. The 17 is just simply the size of the rim. So the 17 is in inches for your rim. That's, that's a rim, not a nipple. <laughs> Now for a 125 rear tyre width wise, you'll probably have something from around 90 to about 120. Some of the newer bikes are going up to like 130s, 140s, even 150s on 125s, which eh, is it needed? It looks cool, in, you know, um, but it can harm agility, which I'll, I'll, again, I'll probably co cover that in a minute. Most sports bikes start around 150 to 160, going up to, you know, 180 even slightly larger in some cases I think but you know that's when you're getting onto massive wide rear tires actually I better just quickly cover it here putting a wider tire on a bike is not going to give you more grip or more turning ability it will it will give you a slightly larger contact patch but what it can also do is cause drag as it were it's not actually drag but on my DRZ I had a 160 on it um, it should have had a 140 on it I then went to a 150 and found that it's like I didn't have to lean as much or the turn in was easier because the tyre wanted to roll in quicker because it's narrower. You know, when you want to turn into a corner, it turns in quicker and feels like it's turning on a tighter radius because it's using a narrower tyre. If it's a wider tyre, it takes a wider radius. So sticking a big wide tyre on a bike, although it looks cool, doesn't necessarily help you. Okay, so let's move on to the letters. These aren't as important really but you know you do need to make sure you got the right ones if you're planning to go this fast particularly in track days and stuff like that because the z rating is the speed rating what this tire can do what, what it can go up to a z rating refers to above 149 miles per hour uh, just to go through some of the other codes, uh, as I believe they are, an R is 106, S 112, T 118, U 124, H 130, V 149, W 168, Y 186. I don't know what you do for bikes to go over 200. Um, but yeah, that's basically the speed rating. So obviously if you're going on a track day with a, you know, an S1000 RR and you're planning to do 170, 180 mile an hour, you don't want like an S tyre that can only really handle 112. The R stands for radial. Uh, there are 
by by layer something of the tires but generally everything's radial as far as i know uh, that's not such an important thing from my perspective of this for beginners and then tl stands for tubeless now i have a video dedicated to explaining the differences between tubed and tubeless tires but simply put if your rim is a cast rim you probably have tubeless tires which means your tire goes directly onto the rim there are no inner tubes in that like on a push bike and there is an edge on that rim designed to take the bead of the tire which we will see when i hack one of these later that sits into a rim so if you imagine this is the rim in cross section so it's, it's going that way we're looking through it this way this is not a great drawing i know you have the thing called the well i believe you have these which are called safety somethings i don't know exactly why they make things safer i'm not an expert on every single detail but i know little bits i need to know uh then you, some of them have a knurling here uh, along this edge i believe that's to try and help keep the tire in the right position so it doesn't rotate because i believe you see those on tubed tires more old tubed tires anyway um you also have this little recess in the bottom here which takes the bead of the tire which holds it in place now a tubeless tire to my understanding and rim won't have that cut out it will basically be straight because the tire fits in here like this you know and then the inner tube fills this space and because inner tubes you think of them as round but when they're actually inflated they're more like a light bulb shape you know like this filling this whole gap and that pushes the tire into the edges you don't need those those cutouts for the retention and holding onto the bead which is why when you convert tubed spoked rims because spoked rims are always tubed because you know there's the spoke comes through like this so air can get around it so you need an, an inner tube inside there unless you do a deletion thing Jake the garden snake mate of mine he's done video doing this and he had he's had no problems um but some people may find problems just just covering the basics you basically tape over this uh so no air gets through and then and then you don't need to put a tube in it um see my video tube tires for tubeless for way more info on that there are some differences now because they're making some rims which are spoked but also tubeless and uh, normally in those designs the spoke won't come up into the housing here it will come up into the rim something like this so you can have the closed space without the, the spoke going through uh, that's normally when you see the side of a wheel will have uh, allen heads all the way around bmws do this um mv does a few other things so the tl will either be tubeless or tube tire so tt tlt T TL or TT. Then the 69, giggly, uh, stands for the weight rating, as in the maximum weight that this tyre can handle. That is the the bike, the rider, the fuel, everything combined pressing down onto that tyre tells you how much weight it can handle. And then the W refers to the speed that the bike can do, the tyre is rated for, at the maximum capacity. So obviously if you run the bike at half its capacity, the tyre is going to do could do x amount of miles an hour or deal with x amount of load um but when you increase that you're putting a lot more wear on the tire and then you can't do as much with it so you don't really need to consider this most of the time but there you go that's what that stands for rear wheel is quite clearly to say it's a rear wheel and then you have mc which just stands for motorcycle so it's saying michelin brand road pilot 2 model 160 millimeters across the height of the side wall is 60 percent of the width its speed rating is above 149 miles an hour. It is a radial tyre which fits a 17 inch rim. It is tubeless. It can take the weight capacity which corresponds to 69 and I'm not going to do the conversions or look it up right now. And the W rating is to do with it what it can do under that load. Rear wheel motorcycle. Pretty simple right? I don't know why we use millimetres, a percentage and inches and miles an hour. You know we just love mixing up the Imperial and the metric. Why not? Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about the actual tyres themselves and picking the tyre for you. Now, this is something I will say. If anyone tells you this is the best tyre money you can buy, this is the best tyre you can get, they are lying. Unless they sell every single size and various different compounds. Because one tyre might work fantastic on one type of bike and be absolutely awful on another type of bike. Uh, for instance, this Michelin Road Pilot 2 on my DR, I found they never really seem to warm up much and really soften and really feel like, I, you know, when it hunkers down into the road and you can feel it grip. I never got that a huge amount unless it was a really, really hot day and I was pushing it and then they could feel okay. I used these tyres two or three times in a row and I was happy with where I was. You know, I'd come out the back of using nylon tyres for seven years, my Chinese 125, and I will say here, 
I actually don't think nylon tyres are nearly as bad as people make out. Yes, a lot of people crash with nylon tyres, but don't they also happen to be 17-year-olds who have been riding for about five months and the first bit of wet they see or diesel and they just lose it and oh it's the it's the nylon tires yes they're not as good as rubber tires on cold wet days they are very slidey that may have taught me how to have better control on a bike i don't know um but when i went when i go off-roading i certainly find i have the natural reactions or well, there's vice versa you learn from both i have the natural reactions to you know recover from slips and be used to slips when i ride supermoto so you know you get used to slipping and sliding around a bit so there are good and bad tyres for your situation, but generally, you know, of all of the bikes I've ridden, I review bikes, I've ridden over a hundred different models, I think, at this point. I've ridden so many different types of tyres, and generally, they're all great. Sure, if you go to something which is like a super soft, like a super coarse or something like that, you're not going to get the same miles out of it, and that's always the playoff with tyres. It's grip over mileage. You can't have super, super grip and super, super mileage at the same time. You either have super grip and low miles, or high miles and not much grip. You, what everyone wants is that happy medium and that's one of the reasons you have uh, multiple compound tires which i'll also get into in this video now i believe in the past companies would put really cheap tires on bikes and they sold them you know it's the classic of people pulling out of, of, of a brand new suzuki dealership or something with with tires that have been you know i've got lacquer and everything on them or polish and there are they're you know they're not necessarily the best tires and they touch the throttle that spins out and they drop their brand new bike it happens now they seem to be getting better and better tires because the customers are requiring them to have better tires when you buy them because it is a chunk of change to buy decent tires so i think that the ones that come with bikes these days can actually be pretty good uh, especially as they've been picked by the manufacturer for that bike they feel that that's a good place that doesn't mean you can't get a better tire uh, because it's more expensive they they will always have a budget with that so you can look around and try different things but generally for most riding conditions i think most tires are okay obviously the super courses and stuff like that are going to fall into the category of more summer tires don't want to go in the wet because it's when it's wet and cold they don't have to so they don't warm up enough to soften uh, and then you don't have any most of the cutouts or any of the cutouts sorry for removing water and then you have other tires which are designed more for using in the winter or all year round which i can show you because i have two tires here so with the super courses where they have no cuts in them uh and like with a slick the thing that gives you the grip is actually the flat surface not the grooves like some people think uh the more flat surface you have the more contact area you have the more grip to the road you'll have if you have a softer compound that also then beds down into like the surface of the road and gives you more contact right soft flat tires give you the most grip in the ideal conditions however when it gets wet you need to get the water out in between so when the water when the rubber comes down it needs to squeeze the water out and that needs to get out between so it isn't a slippage layer between the road and the tire and that's why you have grooves which help get the water out of the way this is a balance somewhere in the middle where they're trying to have an awful lot of surface area but still have some big grooves to get rid of the water itself this one is a metzler rotec 01 and it actually has the exact same code 16067 uh, zr17 mc 69w it's identical to the road 2 as you can see this one has got a lot more cuts in it um all over it and small ones to help dissipate the water so whereas the other one was hoping that these channels themselves would help get rid of all the water. This has got more channels with, with narrower gaps, which are also very wide at the outer, and also holes that I believe are to take some of the water out as well. So everything that gets squeezed that way gets squeezed this way, and it just keeps the water off the surface of the road and allows the rubber to get down and touch the road. So you do have different types of tyres for different times of year and different conditions and terrains. So obviously if you if you want to do off-road you get something with big nobbles on it but you use that on the road and you'll destroy it very quickly and you won't have a lot of grip because you've only got those blocks that you're standing on at any one point. Then you get things that are obviously halfway between the two of those like what Jake had on his, uh, his MT-07 conversion that's like that but it has lots of nobbles in line so you kind of have most of it. It's, uh, it's an interesting one. And you should choose the tyres for what you want to do. Now I've done lots of green naming videos on my DR and People always said to me, you want to get some knobbly tyres on that. And I'm like, well, I ride on the road 95, 99% of the time. Why would I put a tyre, which is ideal for off-road conditions, on a bike that I use for 95 to 99% of the time on the road? I would rather slip and slide around, having fun green laning on a set of road tyres, than putting knobbly tyres on my road bike and riding on those all the time, just for that one occasion that I do go there. But then by the time I go there, I've rounded off all of the, no the knobbles on it, and it's not going to do nearly as good a job as it should no one ever seemed to get that point <laughs> back in the day this, i've realized this is kind of turning into a bit of a 101 <laughs> so let's cover another thing tires you see it says rear 
and it shows you the directions. This tells you where it belongs on the bike and what direction it should be turning when you're going forwards. When I had the Rode Pilot 2s on the front and the rear of my DR, the amount of people that told me my front wheel was put on backwards was staggering. Uh, and even after I made posts and showed pictures of, look, it says it on the tire. I am sure it's the right way around. Still, loads of them. It was quite amazing, but yeah, it can be a bit confusing as to which way round you think they're going to look because, of course, the front wheel is turning this way and it may be perpendicular to the way you're thinking of it, which means that it may actually look backwards but it's going forwards. Or maybe the tyre doesn't exist and we're the ones that are bending. Who knows? Uh, these are made in Thailand, if you're wondering. And I'm trying to see if I can find a date code. I imagine one of these codes refer to a date code, but I don't know why it can't just have a date on it because old tyres do degrade. And this is a perfect segue onto uh, talking about degra degradation of tyres and why if you leave a set of tyres on a bike for a long time and they don't move, it's very bad for them. Tyres that keep moving and keep working keep the oils and things in the moving round and it keeps the rubber supple to my understanding. You leave a tyre to sit and it starts to just harden in that position and starts to uh, it lets, it basically dries out. And uh, well, this tyre has been sat in a stack outside. Let me see if I can find the uh, the offending wound. This tyre was retired because of a bloody great big hole I got in it, uh, which punctured the inner tube. And I said to the guys, do you think we can repair this? And they said no. And I was like, okay, fine. And I bought a new tyre. It's a tubed tyre. There was no reason you couldn't patch this and glue it. Okay, there is a liability issue here, which is if you get a hole in a tyre, companies these days want to just say replace the tyre. It's better for them, it's quicker for them, less liability issues, etc, etc. You're not going to come back time you know because it's leaking because they didn't do it right or someone's going to try and sue you because they had a blowout because it wasn't done right you know that's why they don't want to do it you should and for that reason best practice is to not ever repair tires and to just replace the tire but my god the amount of punctures we get these days but yeah in this case with the tube tire i should have just um rubber cemented all the way through that put a nice patch on it and stuck a tube in it and been happy with it it probably would have been okay but whatever better to be safe than sorry however what it does mean is this tire has been sat around for years on our tire pile of we've got to get rid of tires because you can't just chuck these in the bin you have to take them to a proper approved place so we basically keep a load for years and then chuck them in one go i gave these a wash and i hit it on the ground and it just sounded so hard and i was like christ and then i looked at it and every seam has cracked every single seam in between the rubber when it hit the ground because it is not flexed in years well not every single one that must be where i that must be where i hit it on the ground the hardest yeah all the way through here it's just cracked through all of them and that's because it's old and dried out okay one last thing before we do a bit of experiments and chop this thing in half there is also the difference in compounds. And I was talking earlier on how you have soft compounds which give you grip but you don't get the longevity of the tyre and then you have hard compounds that give you better miles and don't give you as much grip. Uh, in the Euro European, American and Western sort of side of the world, we look at tyres generally, and this is what I'm told by people who work in the industry, we normally look at tyres from a performance perspective. What grip can I get from these tyres over mileage? Whereas in Asian countries, I believe, I'm just saying this is what I've been told, from, you know, Thailand, places like that, they hold, and China, they hold mileage over grip. So that's why, you know, the nylon tyres, you can get silly amounts of miles out of them, but they haven't got quite as much grip. If you know they don't have as much grip and you're not going as fast, it's not such an issue. But of course, you know, this is the thing. This is also the exact same reason why with electric bikes, in the Western culture, we are looking at electric bikes about they've got to be as fast as a thousand and they've got to do this, this and this, and also do the range. Whereas in from the Asian market, to my understanding, they're happy to go slower and not have as much speed and stuff because they want the distance. That's more important than the performance. And it always seems to be that way. We want the flashy performance-based thing and the Asian market wants something that works. Anyway, so you have soft compounds and you have hard compounds. What you can get is multi-compound tyres. Now, this is a Pilot 2 because I believe it has two compounds in it. And what that means is... If you imagine this is the cross section of the tire when they make the tire the middle strip will be made of a harder longer lasting type of rubber because you don't need as much grip on this line because you're normally upright where well, you are upright if you you're not this is not upright you're not and you're not getting much grip you've got an issue 
Basically, you have a normal strip in the middle, which is a harder compound, and then you have softer compounds on the side. So to my understanding, the Road 2 has mostly a hard compound in the middle, and then it has some softer compounds on the side, and then whereas in the Pilot 5, it's got very soft, slightly softer, and then hard in the middle. Idea being that you don't, you want the most grip on the edge of the tyre when you're really pushing it through a corner, because you're not going to be on that edge unless you're pushing it, or falling over. Um, and then reducing that towards the middle where it's not needed as much to try and gain more time out of that tyre before it flattens off. You get flat spots on tyres. You see this is starting to get a bit one, a bit of one. Uh, backing into corners doesn't help with this, obviously, on a DR. Um, skidding around and beefing out of corners with loads of torque. The longer you can keep this profile, the longer you can keep the tyres, basically. Tread depth is something which is obviously a legal requirement. I won't go into the actual categories right here because you can just search it on the government website and it will tell you the exact breakdown there. It's to do with depth of tread across how much the width and the circumference, etc, etc, different on under 50 cc's that just need to have visible tread. Let's have a little go at this tyre and see how easy it is to chop things off of things. The rubber itself... This is a very sharp knife, but... You can carve pieces off like smoked salmon. Smoked salmon, sir. That's actually a lot easier to cut than I thought it was going to be. And it's also very sticky. Not like, not grippy, not sticky. And you can hear it. You can tell there's a, there's a very different sort of rubber here. It feels much more softer and more pla uh, malleable in the sense that it's not dried out on the surface from UV and that sort of stuff. Uh, how easy would it be to just stick the knife through the tyre? Oh, that's quite resistant. Okay, this is a, a converted screwdriver which has a blade on the end. Basically, I ground a blade into it. How much would it take to get it through? Actually, obviously, this if this was inflated, it would be different. I'm not doing any scientific test here. I mean, I know you could do that. I'm sure it's already been done. But I just want to see physically how... Oh, let's... I can feel it cutting the cords. There's something going on in there. Yeah, I'm having to actually cut every layer. And it's through. Now that's a flat sided thing with a knife blade on the end of it. How do screws get in so easily? Well, I guess they just get pinned against the road and the bike just puts the pressure on it and bonk! How easy is it to screw one in? Very. Okay. The hole looks different. It's a lot smaller and less jagged. Um, so if you think someone screwed a screw in your tyre physically, if you unscrew it rather than pulling it out, and you haven't ridden on it, you could probably tell the difference. Right, should we have a look at a cross section of this? Hold on, I'm just going to stop this from moving around. There we go, it won't move around now. I think I've underestimated how difficult this is actually going to be. Now we should get through to a metal cord. Or a bead. There it is. There, you can hear it now. Sounds like a seagull on the way back out. Honestly, I was going to chop a little section out. Nah. Nah, mate. <laughs> Not doing that. <laughs> okay, so there's the cross section of the tyre. Here is the bead, which in this is actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a flower pattern. Uh, cables. Can you see the star pattern of cables? So this hasn't got a single steel bead. It's got individual ones uh, and then obviously you've got the thickness of the sidewall 
this little hook here, this sort of indentation, that's what hooks around on the inside of the rim onto that bead retaining lip which tubed tyres have. You've got some thickness in the sidewall and then you can see these lines of threads, I believe those would be Kevlar, which is to help. Um, and obviously that's what you start seeing when you wear all the way through. But what's interesting is uh, on tyres you have a, well, also wear, wear indicators, right? Okay, so in between, can you see in that groove there's a little bump, slightly higher? Basically when you get down to that bump, the tyre is completely worn out. So they're wear indicators, but you generally don't get that near them, in my experience, because it's better to not and get a new tyre. Oh, I've just noticed, if you look, there's threading that goes down through it as well. There must be another layer in the sidewall. Actually, now you see it all the way through, like a coppery coloured layer. And then these are yellowy, so yeah, I think that is Kevlar. But what's surprising me so much is if you look at the thinness of the tyre at the bottom of the treads, it's so thin. What is that? So like the overall thickness of the tyre here... is 10 mil. In the bottom one of those, it's five millimeters. So you have five millimeters of got a bit of rubber, some Kevlar cords, some other cords, and a bit more rubber. Well, there we go. I was not expecting this video to be this long, but then I didn't realize just how much information I was gonna end up brain dumping on you. Uh, hopefully now, that should answer most of the questions that you'll ever have about bike tires. I hope you did find this video useful, and if you did, please remember to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new here. I'm on my way to 100k, and I would appreciate the help. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please consider doing that through Patreon. Otherwise, as I say, hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching. If anyone's got anything interesting to add, uh, please do do that in the comments. I'm sure you will anyway. But yeah, that's what I can tell you for now. As I say, take that as some, um, some just some general advice from someone who's been riding bikes for 13, 14 years. Bye-bye.